Hi, CCFLA. Good morning. Uh, it's about 11.30, almost 12 o'clock. And uh, we are here this morning together with some of the men of CCF. We're just having this conversation. We want to talk about the topic of uh, what was preached this morning by Pastor Peter. And uh, we felt like the need to, we felt like, you know, we, we want to, to record this and share this with you guys. So we have uh, Marnell. Marnell, how are you? Good, Paul. Thank you. Good morning. And we also have Alex. Morning, Alex, ke paso? Good morning. <laughs> okay. And of, and of course, we have no other than Erwin. Erwin. Hey, good morning, everyone. And the youngest of the team, Kuya Butch. Good morning, everyone. It's nice to be with you guys. Wow, Kuya Butch, mukhang fresh na fresh ka. Thank you. Anyway, anyway you guys have uh, watched the, uh, the message this morning? Yes, we did. Yes. yes. Uh-huh. So, siguro, uh, it's, uh, it's nice if we can probably start by reading Psalms chapter 13. Uh, Erwin, would you like to read Psalms 13? I think you have a very nice translation out there. Okay. Yeah, I just found this out from Brother Alex that there's a, <laughs> a, a, an easy translation in the Bible app. So, and, uh, I, so what we're going to do is we're going to try that this morning. So I'm going to be reading uh, uh, Psalm 13 uh, on the translation easy. So it's, it's titled A Prayer for Help. Verse 1. Lord, will you continue to forget about me forever? When will you remember to come and help me? I am sad and confused all the time. How long must this continue? How much longer will my enemies continue to win against me? Lord, please listen to me. I feel that I am nearly dead. Please give me the strength to live. If I die, my enemies will say, we have won against him. My enemies will be very happy if I fall. But I will trust you because of your special love. Please make me safe so that I can be happy and thank you. Yes, I will sing to praise the Lord because he will surely help me. I think the message this morning is very timely. I'm sure you guys will agree with me that, you know, Oftentimes, we have the same prayer as what uh, Erwin read earlier. And many times we ask God, Lord, do you actually hear my prayer? Or sometimes, or many times, me in particular, man, I've been very impatient. Are you impatient, uh, Erwin? Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, I'm impatient. Like at least every day, I think I experience that. Uh, you know, there are times like you know, if I cannot fall asleep right away, mm -hmm. I'm so impatient, right? Uh, every time that I order something from Amazon, and when they says that okay, it will come on a certain time and it's not here, I'm impatient. Um, I mean, it's like having impatient, like you know, every like at work. You know, you're expecting for uh, an employee bonus, you know, and then you check your bank account and it's not posted yet, you know, you're getting impatient. So the message this morning really reminded me of all the things that, things that I have been impatient for. And a lot of times I think the message really speaks to me that it's basically it's a heart issue you mm -hmm. know because because i think for me it's like you know like for example on that amazon i mean i've been paying you know the prime okay fee right and so i expected that you know i'm paying for it that you know i'm privileged to have that item that i order on a certain time you know, so that's why I think it's the heart issue is the way we look at it. And, and again, you know, it's, it's the thing that, that always reminds me about, okay, the reason why people are being patient because they think they are privileged. Mm. 
You know what? I have an order. Can I ask you to follow up my order? <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, like like for example, this COVID thing, uh, Brother Alex, what do you think? Sometimes we are impatient. We have been quarantined for three months already. And some of us are, are really impatient. We want to visit our friends. We want to go to the mall. We want to, in fact, some of us are some people are texting me, when are we going back to church? So mm-hmm. now that the pandemic is starting to go down, Brother Alex, diba? And then all of a sudden, we have all of these, uh, these issues that are coming up and it disrupted everybody's life. What do you think about it, Alex? Well, you know, it, 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 and we're talking about impatience right now and also the waiting. Um, what the message that we heard earlier uh, from Pastor Peter, it dealt more on um, also on recognizing what is happening and what can we do while this thing is happening right now, while we're waiting. Um, and, and one message that I got from uh, him was, uh, from God's word was, um, remembering what he has done for us and the good things in particular and also what we can do with what we, we are in right now. Like for example, um, those you mentioned, we, were, we are at home for the most part. And, and we, we've seen, and what I've done is cherish that moment with my family. Um, see what's good in it. See what I can do. Um, and, and a lot of people have done that and actually, we're very grateful. Uh, mm-hmm. We should be grateful. Yeah. yeah. Um, if, if you remember, Alex, Pastor Peter uh, read a uh, passage in Jeremiah chapter 29. Mm-hmm. You know the background of yeah. Jeremiah 29? The people of Israel were actually in captivity. They were oppressed. They were, you know, they were, they were in slavery. And they, they were actually suffering. And what did God say? You know what? Let's look at it. Jeremiah chapter 29. Okay, I, I, I like what it says in, in Jeremiah chapter 29. Okay, let's start reading from verse 6. Take wives and beget sons and daughters and take wives for your sons and give your daughters to husbands so that they may bear sons and daughters that you may be increased there and not diminished. And seek the peace of the city where I have caused you to be carried away captive and pray to the Lord for it. For in its peace, you will have peace. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, do not let your prophets and your diviners who are in your midst deceive you nor listen to your dreams which you cause to be dripped. For they prophesy falsely to you in my name, I have not sent them, says the Lord. Now, if we jump to verse 11, it says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. You know what the Lord is saying here is, while we are waiting, while you are in quarantine, we need to be busy. Mm -hmm. The problem with many people is, you know, uh, instead of being busy, they think of the negative things that's happening around us. They dwell on it, and what happens? It causes fear on them. And the Lord gives us an assurance in verse 11, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you. It is thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. Like what you shared, Alex. Despite the fact that you're quarantined in your house, you took advantage of the time that you have to spend time with your family. Isn't that a good example, you know, when you're waiting on something, when you're waiting for this quarantine to to be over, you're making use of your time. And in fact, it's giving you uh, uh, better results, right? Yes. And, and, you know, uh, one question that we would, that I would normally ask myself is, what is God telling me to do? Someone reminded me of that. Uh, what is what does God want me to do right now? And uh-huh. what does God want me to see right now? 
Um, and, so and it's just like you're saying, you're trying to see how what is the best response to yes. the situation that we're in right now. That's Marnell, cool. what do you think? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's it's like like you said, um, Brother Edge. When while you're waiting, yeah, it's important to one one of his um, one of the points in in the message was to pour out your heart. Uh, well, the three the, the three points are pour out your heart, process with him, and praise him in in, in advance. So pouring your heart uh, to the Lord and and uh, obeying him is is very important when while you're waiting. It's because um, it's it's in your it's in the waiting time when you can really learn more about about the Lord. It's oh, waiting, very nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's it's in the waiting time will you will really uh, draw closer to the Lord because many times. You know, as, as we mentioned, um, when we it's it's hard it's hard uh, it's hard for us to wait. I mean, by nature, I mean we are we're very impatient, right? I mean, here in uh, in Los Angeles, there's traffic, right? Uh, traffic alone is a uh, is a challenge, um, and even in, in in our jobs, it's a it's a challenge also for in uh, in waiting for uh, for other people. But as as a, as believers in Christ. It's important. It's important for us to pour out our hearts, and um, and draw closer to the Lord, um, so that we will learn more about Him and really understand what He is trying to say. Um, it reminds me of uh, Psalm Psalm thirty-seven. I'll, I'll I'll just read it here. It says in here, uh, Psalm chapter thirty-seven, verse verse seven. It says, "Rest in the Lord and wait uh, patiently for Him. Do not fret because of Him, who." prosperous in his way because of the man who carries out wicked schemes so yes it's important for us to you know to to really pour out to the lord and 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 focus on him while we're waiting so that we will see what he is trying to to tell us so are you telling me marnell that uh often times you experience certain situations in life and what happens is you don't get the answer from the lord immediately do you experience did you experience that Oh, definitely yes. <laughs> uh-huh. I mean, I'll, I'll give you an example. Um, just I I got married late, and I was waiting for that uh, you know God's best for for a while. But you know what I learned uh, when I when I just when I stayed with the Lord, when I just uh, continued to to uh, know, to to pray to Him and really focus on Him, I realized that the Lord was preparing us for eventually for when we were going to to meet each other so until i was ready until we were ready he um the, the lord was uh, was working in our hearts well it seems like Marnell, you're telling me that you know the waiting is an opportunity for god to change and mold our character what do you think of that brother butch yeah the first question is what don't you like waiting for you mean Initial reaction for me is I become anxious, I become disappointed, I become discouraged. But again, uh, I'll, I'll uh, give you an example of what happened to me on my vacation in the Philippines. Coming back from Manila to uh, uh, Los Angeles, our flight was delayed. It was supposed to leave at 11.30 at night, but it left at 1.30, two hours later. So. What I did was, okay, there's nothing we can do. So I just prayed. And and then I remember uh, Romans 8.28. It says, For all things work together for good, for those who love Him, for those who are called according to His purpose. And you know what happened? When we were on the air, the tailwind pushes the plane faster. And instead of going about 600 miles per hour, we are almost going about 800 miles per hour. And what happened was we arrived one hour earlier than scheduled flight. <laughs> so isn't that amazing? Yeah. That uh, uh, when we become uh, uh, anxious and we are told to wait, God works in so many miracle ways. So for yeah. me, waiting, it, it, it makes us a better person. We just have to do something and trust that God has a better plan for us that God has a better plan of why it happened. And sometimes we don't see the end result. We wait for things and we want it on our own time. So I've learned a lot of good lessons just by waiting. 
it gives us a feeling that we have to trust God on what is happening in our lives. Pastor Peter mentioned earlier that uh, God is more concerned on the development of our characters rather than our comfort. What do you think of that, uh, Marnell? Yes, I, I totally agree on it, de developing on our character. Because uh, as Christians, we're supposed to um, to be more Christ-like uh, every day. It's um, to model model Christ-likeness, and our what what the Lord is doing in our in our lives every day is that He's He's molding us, like it says in I think it's Isaiah. Uh, mm -hmm. He is our Potter, and we are the clay. Mm -hmm. um, every day He is molding us, it, even in the smallest things. I mean, just just for example, um, for me at work, I mean. I, you know, I can be very impatient, but he is working on my, um, on my character every day. You know, mm -hmm. um, if I'm intentional in actually looking at the at the word, or actually if I memorize the the, the verses that, um, in my mind, it 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 helps me to uh, to remember it while I'm going through it. And so, for like for example, Philippians two two three to eight, you know, it it has helped me a lot when I memorized it. It has helped me a lot to be to be more patient with. If I put the other person's interest, it helps me to be more patient every day. So yes, he is. Uh, I totally agree in what he is saying that he is de developing our character and he's molding mm -hmm. us in the way that he wants us to to be. Praise God! Praise God! Yeah. Also, can uh, I, uh, uh, brother Dej, sure. Can I ask on that? Uh, can I add on that too? Uh, I think waiting on God is good for us. Because imagine, you know, every time that we ask something, you know, you pray for something, and then if God acted immediately on that, every time we, you know, we cried out to Him, then a lot of times, you know, we might think that we are in control. It's not, it's not Him. You know, but, that but isn't we, it we need to control our destiny? Yes. But again, you know, it's basically, it's always on God's timing because I think I our, 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 our timeline is different from the God's timeline. Uh -huh. You know, I remember, I remember, and I was sharing this to my wife earlier when we were listening to the message. I remember the story of uh, Lazarus and John. You know, when, when Mary and Martha was trying to tell Jesus Christ, like, you know what? Uh, you know, your friend Lazarus is dying, but Jesus didn't act it right away. He waited, okay? He waited, mm -hmm. and then by the time he came to the house of Lazarus, Lazarus is already dead. But at the same time, we know in that story that Jesus, you know, raised up Lazarus. And the thing too is that I think one of the things too that 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 i think that it's a lesson for us though because waiting for me it reveals it will reveal god's glory mm -hmm. you know because of that then people you know during the, you know those people that was that witnesses that then then now this is like well truly this god this jesus christ is really powerful you know that mm -hmm. even a dead person he can make him rise up so yeah, it reveals uh, his glory too, and and I think for us though, that's the that's the kind of character that God is allowing us to experience every time we undergo the waiting period. Okay, because God. it you know like to really to trust Him and 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 believe in Him that He has the power to do everything, but again it's on His timeline, not our timeline. Nice, nice. Kuya Butchbe, I have a question for you. What should be our attitude while waiting on the Lord? Because, you know, sometimes we have the propensity to grumble and sometimes we have the propensity to say, well, God doesn't care for me, doesn't, you know, He doesn't hear me, I will be on my own. What do you think of that, Kuya Butch? You know, uh, there's a lot of enlightenment on James 1, uh, chapter 2. Uh, James 1, verse 2 to 5. It says, Consider it all joy, 
when you are encountering trials, knowing that testing of your faith produces endurance and let endurance have its perfect result so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. You see, if, if uh, we are put on uh, a trial, then our, our human nature takes over, not knowing that God has a perfect plan for us. So here he says we have to have joy. We should be happy that we are on the trial, on the challenge, on the issues that we are facing, because it will make us a better person. Oh, that's nice. Mm -hmm. That's nice. You know what? I wanted. I want to share something. Uh, probably I'll ask Erwin to read it, because he has a better translation. Okay. I think the <laughs> translation is called Easy Translation. Uh, Erwin, can you uh, actually read? from uh, West from my West Covina group? group. Uh -huh. <laughs> by the way, Thank you, brother. West by the way, West hello West Covina group. I heard Joey is the one reading the the scriptures every time you have a meeting, right? Yes, and we're very grateful. <laughs> I see. Word of God, of course. <laughs> okay, uh, Erwin, can you open or read Habakkuk chapter three? Let's start reading from verse seventeen. Chapter three. Yes. And verse uh, 17, right? Yeah, by the way, uh, we miss Ike. Ike, if you're watching us, hi Ike, mm -hmm. we missed you. Hi Ike. <laughs> okay, Habakkuk 3, verse, verse 17. It says, again, it's in the easy version. Whatever happens, I will continue to thank the Lord. If there are no flowers on the fig trees, if there are no grapes on the vines, if there are no olives on the olive trees, if there are no crops in the fields, if the sheep are dying in the hills, if there are no cows on the farms, verse 18, I will still sing to thank the Lord. I will be happy because God is the one who makes me safe. Wow. Continue. Wow. Before you continue. Mm -hmm. You know, my reaction to that is wow. Yeah. Because it says there, even if it seems that nothing is happening, it's happening. what is going to be our attitude? We need to continue to rejoice. We need to continue to thank God. Okay. Even if our bank accounts are, the balance of our bank, bank accounts are approaching zero. Even if sometimes you don't see with your with your physical eyes the things that we've been asking for, Habakkuk admonishes us that we need to continue to praise and worship our God. Very nice, right? Yeah, and 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 I think though that is one of the things that a lot of people, including Christians, lack nowadays, mm -hmm. is you know having that heart of gratitude. You know, instead of complaining, instead of being impatient, I mean, you gotta have you gotta have that heart of gratitude that you know you can always thank God. Just like what we're experiencing right now with all this stay at home, I mean, it does. Just like what brother brother uh, Alex says, that it it did a lot of great things. I mean, imagine when you know the. Word of God now can be heard all over the world because of the technology, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Uh, you know, you don't, you know, you don't really need to go to to a church, even though that you know we like to fellowship with other with other brothers and sisters in Christ. But you know, the amazing thing that happened on this is just like a lot of people are having that opportunity now, mm -hmm. you know, to to hear the gospel, the word of God. And, and one thing too that, that, you know, based on my own experience is that, you know, it was also um, an opportunity for me, just like what I've been, I've been, I've shared to you guys that I was able to have a weekly Bible study with my family, you know, and my family does not just live here in California. You know, we, I, we have family in the Philippines, we have family in the East Coast. And the excitement that they have every Sunday you know, mm -hmm. to, for us to be together, you know, to have a Bible study using, you know, Zoom and, you know, all these other platforms. 
and and just them learning the, the word of God. I mean, you know, uh, it's one thing to be thankful to God about. You know what, Erwin, you, you, you mentioned the point. You know, I realize that there may be some people watching us who are actually wondering, why are we talking this way? You know, there might be some, you know, friends of our friends, our fellow churchmates, probably some of them are wondering, why is it that despite all of these issues, this pandemic, why is it that you guys can still say that, you know, God is faithful, God is good, God is the process of molding us, so on and so forth. You know what, I just wanted to, I just want to share with you uh, what God has done for our lives. And I think all of you will agree with me that before we came to know Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior, probably we have negative outlook in life. Probably at the time, our perspective is that we just trust ourselves. But now that the Lord is in us and we have that personal relationship with the Lord, as what Psalm said, David said in Psalms, trust in the Lord and lean not in your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him and He will direct your paths. You know, when we started to trust and place our trust in the Lord, it is God who directs our paths. Despite the fact of the situation around us, I'm sure many of us have testified that, you know, you see the beauty, you see the goodness of the Lord, right? Despite of the pandemic, despite of, of, of the news that we hear every day uh, in our television or even read in our social media. Am I correct, uh, Alex? Yes, uh, very much so. And we learned a lot from this one message that we heard from this morning, last night. In one of them, and like you mentioned, and we mentioned earlier, being grateful for what we have and what we've had. And if that's not even enough uh, for us to consider, we should probably consider even the, you know, how powerful God is and what He's going to do for us that hasn't even happened yet. And be thankful for that already. Uh, that was part of the message earlier that I, I heard. And that was, that was really great. Um, it's something that I took into heart. That if I can't find anything to be grateful for right now, then I mean, I'll be grateful for what He's going to do for me. Because I know how powerful He is. I know what His plans for us is. Plans as far as are. And He is God. We just need to let Him be Him. Mm -hmm. That's true. Now, Reg, can, can I add on that? Of course, yeah. Okay. I, I just wanted to add, um, you know, from listening uh, to you guys, I know you mentioned, um, you know, about joy, about rejoice, about us, despite of what's going on, um, we are able to uh, to continue to have this uh, this joy. Um, it reminds me about uh, what joy, what, what kind of joy the uh, the Bible is talking about. The the kind of joy that the the Bible is talking about is um, is a state of uh, contentment that is not affected by the circum uh, external uh, cir circumstance and uh, and the reason we're able to do that like like you mentioned is be be is because we have christ in, in our lives um i remembered um in uh, psalm 23 what what david said the lord is my shepherd i i shall not want or the lord is, is my shepherd um basically he's saying that i am content i have everything that i need and so as Christians, you know, when we when we uh, when we have the Lord in our lives, when we realize now who He is in our lives and what He can do, uh, that He can be our provider, our protector, and uh, and the sh uh, the shepherd of our life, then we will have that uh, state of contentment because we know that we're secure when we are with Him. Uh, I'd like to share this ABC to those who are watching us, who are wondering what you guys are talking about a you know what a is accepting that we are helpless apart from the lord the bible says that uh, all of us fell short of god's glory b is we need to believe believe what believe that it is only jesus christ 
who can bail us out from the situation we are in. The Bible says that for all of us, all of us have sinned and fell short of the glory of God. And no one is righteous. All of us are sinners. But because of what Jesus has done on the cross of Calvary, and because of the sacrifices that He did, you and me can now come to God, talk to Him directly. In Hebrews it says we can come boldly into the throne room of God. And when we come to Him, we will receive mercy and grace in times of crisis. Letter C is confess. Confess to God our sins. You know, it says that if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us of all of our unrighteousness. So this morning, if, if you were watching us and you were wondering about who this God, who this Jesus is we're talking about, I encourage you to receive Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. You know, relationship is very important to the Lord. And God loves you. In Jeremiah, it says that God has a plan and a purpose for your life. And God is offering us a free gift. And that free gift of eternal life. And as what Marnell mentioned earlier, if we have that Christ in our lives, then we have that inner joy. Joy that is not affected by the circumstances, the problems that we have uh, around us. So I would like to invite you to pray with me a simple prayer. You know what? There is nothing fancy with this prayer. This prayer is simply acknowledging our weakness, our helplessness, and believing that Jesus is Lord and He's the only one who can cleanse us of all our unrighteousness and our sins. And when we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus, the Bible says we will be saved. So will you pray this simple prayer with me? Lord Jesus, I come to you. I acknowledge that I am a sinner. I acknowledge that I am helpless. Lord, I believe with my heart because of what Jesus has done on the cross of Calvary. You are offering me the gift of salvation. I confess with my mouth that Jesus, you are Lord. And I ask you to come into my life and I make you the Lord of my life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I would like to invite you to join one of our discipleship group. You know, the conversation that we had this morning goes, you know, it's similar to what is happening in our discipleship group. We talk about how we can encourage each other and we talk about how we can learn from the experiences of other people. So write us, send us an email, send us an email at ccflanorth.org. And Brother Marnell, since you're the one who organized this conversation, do you have some last words or anything you'd like to, to say? Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you for, uh, for participating uh, in this uh, panel discussion and our discussion about the message. And uh, we, we will try to uh, continue to, uh, to do this uh, every week. So by the you. way, by the way, Marnell, isn't it yes, last, yesterday we discussed that one of these days we will be asking the Eagle Rock group to host something like this. And yes. then one of these days the, the Korea Town group and then the West mm -hmm. Covina, right? Yes, yes the, yeah. Mm -hmm. So when Definitely. are you going to, to, to schedule that? <laughs> We will, uh, we will send you the messages soon. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. And I hope you guys have been blessed with our conversation this morning. Thank you very much. Thank God you. God bless everyone. God bless.